Hi there, uh, this is Miss Hurst and I am your student science project, projects teacher. I wanted to give you a little intro about me and what your students can expect from the class and what you can expect of me as a teacher. A couple of things about me. I've been teaching for a long time. I am a 14 year edu educator veteran to this valley. Um, I've been teaching high school for the last over decade, which has prepared me for the wonderful job of teaching middle school. I also teach at College of the Canyons and I regularly teach uh, teachers through the California Science Project and through Cal State Northridge. I'm actively involved in curriculum development at the nationwide and statewide level. I developed content for the state of California. Um, I've worked for every major curriculum company and um, I am a astronomy ambassador. Um, I am a NASA JPL solar system ambassador, a US astronomy ambassador and got to travel to Chile last year through the National Science Foundation. And I am currently on the US Aerospace Advisory Board. Um, I love to travel. Um, I love to adventure. I am a former professional mountain biker and I got the opportunity to fly on NASA's SOFIA mission a couple of years ago. I'm really excited to share this course with your learners and to really inspire them to think about their place and the validity of a STEM field or a STEM career. My goal for them is to learn to love the world around them and to see it through scientific eyes of process and the way things work together and to be able to explain phenomena. I want them to love the science and become curious about the world around them and to find um, and seek out explanations and to gain some confidence in their own abilities as they learn to work together as a team. This class is entirely built around teamwork. There are no assessments in this class. It is entirely driven by student projects. So every couple of weeks, they will be starting a new project. They will be working with new people. They are going to be designing a mission patch this semester, which I hope that we are going to be able to actually like create and get your kid each a mission patch, um, just like they do with NASA missions. Um, I also uh, hope and I've already seen that they are going to be honing and mastering their skills of digital citizenship and gaining just a ton of tech tools that they otherwise wouldn't be gaining until far later in their academic careers. These pictures are some examples of student projects which I've led and facilitated for the last few years. Um, I have launched uh, numerous student high altitude balloons. The one on the right with the little French Lego that was featured in a documentary. In the bottom left, that's with Live Oak Elementary School in Castaic. And the one in the top right, that was with West Ranch High School students last May. My Google Classroom is set up according to weeks. Um, I organize every week to have that week's work in it. And everything along the left hand side are clickable links. You can see that at the top of my Google Classroom, I always have in it a section that says warmups, weekly agendas, and quick writes. So there are daily slides that I show. Students could click here to be able to see that. They can also see the weekly agenda. And daily I do a quick write where students could see or you could see their daily participation points. So that way uh, what students are doing in class is incredibly transparent. The quick write is something we do every single day. They get participation points. I monitor their growth, I provide them continuous feedback um, through that quick write. This is an example of what your students see every single day when they come into class. So sometimes we do a question of the day, Fridays we do fitness Fridays, um, so they be, might be doing an exercise there like holding a plank or doing some squats or something. Um, so. Uh, here is would be just a, a sample of what they would see. So every time when they come into class, I am screen sharing. This is what they see. They would see the instructions for the day, which is usually giving them some time to handle their business to um, get some breakfast. They can eat breakfast with me. Sometimes I eat breakfast with them, um, opening up their quick write, their attendance and opening up whatever it is they are supposed to need for the day. I usually give them a couple minutes to handle anything they need to handle to um, go to the restroom to get water to make sure they're all set to be sitting for the day because I see them first thing in the morning. Um, I also then tell them what they are getting out and opening in Google Classroom. Then I always tell them what they're doing for the day. So in this case, they had a warm up and we were starting a NASA lesson. 
Here is a sample of their weekly agenda. And I continuously update this based on whatever we're doing in class so that this could be a real quick go to for students who say have internet issues or they're not there or they just need a refresher. This would be a great place to check. And this is summarizing exactly what um, they did for the day and also what they are doing in upcoming weeks because I posted at the beginning of the week. I try and give students as many opportunities to demonstrate their understanding and to grow as a student and to really excel um, on a personal level as possible. So um, every day I try and give them some sort of thought provoking um, little factoid of question of the day or um, a fitness challenge. Um, I give them opportunities for regular peer collaboration and interaction. And we're really trying to build that sense of community and um, a way for students to work together because science is not done in a vacuum, neither is life. So I try and give them multiple opportunities to learn the way that cooperative groups work. What I've seen teaching high school and teaching college for the last decade is that students have this tendency to think about collaboration as just dividing and conquering. And that's just not really the way things generally work. It's about building upon the ideas of others. So I try and build in opportunities for students to do that on a regular basis and to just get them talking and actively listening and being present in the process. Um, and, I, and I give them opportunities in breakout rooms and projects continuously. Um, I also give them continuous opportunities to develop their passions. Um, the beauty of this course is that they can really determine what it is they're doing. For example, right now we are looking at studies in microgravity and on the ISS, but they really choose the avenue of that. They're choosing things within microgravity that are of interest to them. And I give them multiple modalities to demonstrate understanding. Um, there may be YouTube videos that they're watching, things that they're linking to that demonstrate their understanding, or videos that they're creating themselves. In addition to um, Jamboard collaborative sticky note collages, or um, creating drawings and documents. And what we refer to uh, in this class and throughout the process of science is thinking about the um, design process and asking a question and imagining a solution and planning a solution and creating and improving and continuously revising that iterative process. This is an example of what some things, some things that students are doing right now. So we are starting a lesson um, learning about NASA and doing some NASA background. Um, so I infuse NASA and space studies into really all of our lessons. So um, they just completed this map of NASA facilities and looking at the different roles that every NASA facility has, they are very different and being able to, to match that to the geography. We are starting a project called Spiders in Space where they are looking at and measuring the growth of spiders that were sent up to the space station and how their growth and their web development was tracked um, analogous to spiders that were on the ground. So we're looking at studies of microgravity and the International Space Station. Our next project is going to be designing a lunar hub. We will be infusing a few design challenges in there. And um, if I am able to get your kids seeds, we will also be doing a comparison of seeds that have been to the space station. That is called the Tomato Sphere Project and it is very cool. One of the ways that I track your students' participation and engagement throughout class is something called quick writes. And students are just getting acquainted to this process. So when students get into class, they open up their quick write. They each have a cell they can write in. And what this is, is a Google document that I have conditionally formatted and I run scripts through. So what it does is I then ask students questions and depending on the type of the question, it will gauge, there is a script and it'll color code their response and it'll tell me um, their level of participation, how much they have engaged with it, how well they have followed the instructions. Um, and it should color code their answer green. And when it does, then I see their participation. This also allows me to track any penalty points if students are off task, if they're using the chat in an inappropriate manner, if they are um, continuously being disruptive. And this is a way that you could check every single day, how many participation points does your student have? Do they have any penalty points? Um, and you will start to see this populate their infinite campus grade here shortly with weekly participation points. And there may be times that when they're working on a project where they their quick write is to put in a link to their project. And what this allows me to do is very quickly monitor exactly where every single student is at, whether they have their camera on or off. 
A note on grading. Um, I have been having an issue syncing my Google Classroom with my Infinite Campus. I have multiple tech teams working on this. They have been for five days at the point of this recording, um, but I cannot get it to integrate. Um, I am confident we are going to have this issue resolved shortly, but as of now, um, grades are not all updated in Infinite Campus. I am usually really on top of grading. I grade every day. Um, you can see progress and comments in Google Classroom. Um, and you will start seeing their participation grades coming uh, out every single week, like week four participation that is entirely based on the participation I see in class and also that engagement with the quick write. Um, and those are questions that I'm asking throughout class so that they can't just turn on a camera and um, you know kind of check in with me and walk away. So they have to be actively involved. Even if they're working on something independently, I'll call them back and have them go to a task. So like a check-in. One of the things that um, I hope that you hear from your learners after being in my class is some of my mantras. Um, and these really justify a lot of the things that we're doing in here. So I'm constantly telling them, whether you build spacecraft or you flip hamburgers, you are always gonna have to work with others. Um, life is about learning to work with people that are different than you. And I really hope to instill that ability in students by starting some of these collaborative groups um, in middle school. I'm always telling them to work smarter, not harder, because the other way is just not fun. So um, I'm trying to show them ways to do that with their work, with the organizational structure, with their prioritization of tasks so that they can always learn to work smarter, not harder. Um, I am really a stickler about my structure and assignments. For example, if I tell them they have to color their text red, it is incomplete if they did not do that. Because one of my mantras is if we have to follow the simple rules now so that later on we can follow the tougher rules. So we can follow the tougher rules later. Because right now it may be something simple and silly like coloring your text red. But if we can't do those tasks now, we can't follow tough life rules later. So um, I give students the constant chance to revise and revise their thinking and revise their work and revise their thought process. So, um, I, but that again comes down to working smarter, not harder, and just reading through the instructions the first time. So I do not accept incomplete work. I will continuously provide that feedback and give it back to them and make them do it again um, to where hopefully then they can learn to not cut corners. And again, this is just a life skill that I hope to instill in students. Some ways that you can be involved with your student is to add my Google Classroom and get any updates that I post. You can subscribe to those updates. I know there was info sent out from our admin team about how you can get um, updates every week of comments that have been put into your um, student's classroom so you don't have to just continuously check it. Um, I am a mother of two boys who are doing their learning in my house as well, so I feel the pain of having to find quiet and places to work. I am having to work at my kitchen table um, and sometimes up in my closet. So I know that can be a challenge, but finding a place that can be as free of distractions as possible, including them having other screens out, that can be a huge distraction. Um, encouraging your students to uh, get up away from the screen every single day and take screen breaks is really, really important. And that'll help them to come back and have a renewed focus. I have one boy that does that very well and one that does not. So again, um, from a parental standpoint, I feel the pain and that struggle is real. Um, it's really important right now to be positive about this environment and what our now looks like. When students hear parents that talk about how um, awful this sort of learning situation is, that really transfers to their mentality. And to be honest, I don't think it's that awful. We're doing some pretty cool projects that are really conducive to this sort of environment. Things that I may not have otherwise been able to do in the class. Um, students are gonna be doing real science and they're gonna be really enacting um, and, and embodying the role of a scientist. And they're able to do that remotely. And I think that they're going to gain some amazing skills that they may not have otherwise gathered until high school or college. So this really isn't all bad. And I really hope that um, you can see some of that as well. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions, comments, or concerns. There is my contact info, and I look forward to getting to know all of you better as I work with your learners. Thank you so much. Have a great day.